Hey there, Wargamers. This is Justin Collette with another episode of my Tactical Tuesday series. And with this episode, I would like to analyze and talk about the broadside. Now, I've seen a whole lot of talk online, and I imagine that you guys have too, and most of the talk revolves around the, quote, missile sides. And I think that there is a certain degree of truth in st the statement that the missile, sides, missile side is the more efficient variant of the broadside. However, I wanted to talk about the railgun broadside and why I think that it does have a viable option, or is a viable option, and has a, a place in the Tau army. Now, looking at this guy, the one thing on him that I will say really won't get utilized and is there for an aesthetics uh, or, or cosmetic look is the uh, Seeker missile. Uh, I think it looks cool. I like the idea of thinking that my broadside has a rocket that can, you know, reach up over his shoulder and, and blast something. Uh, but I generally just have it there, and, and I'm not really, I don't think opponents would really care too much so long as the rest of the model is correct. It's just there to look cool. Um, that, and it kind of balances out the model. Again, if you just look at the rear, if uh, if I didn't have this rocket here and only had these missile pods, it would just kind of be bare in there. And I just like the idea. He's like a mech. I think of mech warrior when I look at the Tau, especially their suits, and that's what I like. Um, that's just me personally. Uh, if I had the points and I really had nowhere to put them, I might run the, the Seeker missile, but... The problem is that getting marker lights in, at least for me, for Tau, while it can be easy with spamming Pathfinders, the problem I have is if the Pathfinders get focused and all my uh, marker lights are gone, no way to fire off the Seeker missile. So that's my problem. Anyways, uh, the variant that I have here that I think is, is useful is the Railgun and the Smart Missile System. As you can see on this model, it's got a little bit of conversion. i got some tubing here. Uh, I always like the idea of the tube going from the backpack to the gun, providing power, and the gun's a little bit uh, over the top for the uh, lighting energy type effect, but when I think of a rail, rail, uh, rail gun, or I guess they might have changed the, the name on this, I think it might be like rail something, they used to be the strength in there anymore, but I think of a big, huge, super hot beam of plasma something blasting across the battlefield and just punching through everything, not just one unit. When I think of the rail gun, I think of a, a big beam just going you know, going through buildings, going through units before it dissipates. I mean, that's strength 10 AP one's a big deal, and it's a beam. You know, well, not really a beam, but I imagine a beam. So, anyways, viability of the broadside with the, the rail gun, and why I think that this is viable, you know, in addition to the missile side, it, it, almost equal. And the, the shots, perhaps not um, but here are the raw thoughts I have on the broadside with the railgun. For the missile side to be super efficient, I feel like you really need to make sure you have a couple of marker lights for them to utilize. They have a whole bunch of shots and you really don't want them to miss. With the broadside, with the regular railgun, it's twin linked, and yes it is only one shot, strength at AP1, but at ballistic skill 3, reasonable chance to hit with twin linked. But if you toss out just one marker light, putting them at Bill Cisco 4 with two rolls to make that, that's a big deal. I mean, that's that the, the odds go up substantially when you up your ballistic skill by one and you have two, two chances to hit. Not even considering the fact they have smart missiles. Now, why would I run the smart missiles over the uh, plasma rifles? Well, here's why. The smart missiles have a longer range and they're twin linked and they ignore cover. You know, the... Pulse rifle or plasma rifle is uh, range 24, one shot, you know, two at a, or it might be 30, whatever. Um, and it's got uh, rapid fire. And, you know, if you're that close to the broadside, he's getting ready to have problems. So I feel like these smart missiles are good for anti infantry. The rail gun is good for light, I say light armor, because if there's an armor 14 on the table, you absolutely can't do much of anything. Um, but looking at the strength of the rail gun compared to the uh, was a high yield missile system or whatever that they carry, uh, there's one strength difference. Um, however, the rail gun gets one shot. The missiles that he can carry get probably four. So strength seven, four shots versus strength eight, one shot twin linked. You know the the math is there. People go, well, I have a handful of dice versus one dice. You have to consider what you're doing with the broadside. Now, imagine looking down the field at a parking lot of vehicles, which doesn't happen very often. However, you know, with the state of the game the way it is, 
people aren't packing as much anti-vehicle as they were. So if somebody happens to come in with some armor, the options for taking it out are minimal compared to what people were packing in 5th edition. In 5th edition, you had to have Meltas or something of the equivalent to take out vehicles and get them out of, off the table. Now, for Tau, looking at the broadsides, you have Strength 7, 4 shot, Strength 8, AP 1, 1 shot, Twin Linked. The Strength 7 is good for light vehicles. I feel like the Strength 8 is a little bit better for everything but Land Raiders. So, excluding Layman Russes, because essentially they almost fall into the Land Raider category with that front armor 14, but thinking about Chimeras and Predators and, and you know, various Orc vehicles, which uh, Orc vehicles have lower armor anyway, but if you're looking at that, Strength 7 to an armor front armor 13, the best you can't do anything to it. So, you know, if you if you're facing predators and you're playing Tau and you don't bring something over strength seven, you can't do anything to the front armor. Against a Chimera, you know, let's let's talk, think about uh, Imperial Guard or Grey Knights running the uh, Inquisitorial Henchmen. Front armor 12, your strength seven against their 12. Sixes, or excuse me, fives to glance. Sixes to pin. So yeah, I guess you could glance the uh, the predator. Sorry, but still, the odds are are not quite in your favor. Whereas the strength eight, you have pretty good odds of pinning, and it's AP one, so plus two the damage. So if you actually pin it, you're going to put a big hole in whatever was there. I think that's important to note because the Tau as a whole have a whole slew of strength five, strength seven, strength seven, or strength six, strength seven weapons. They have a whole bunch of stuff that's really good against light armor and mass infantry. But from the games I've played, I've, I've had issues where I've had tunnel vision and I have brought whole, whole bunches of lower strength weapons for the Tau, you know, five, less than eight basically, but still five or better. And I've had issues with really high toughness models, let's, uh, let's say the uh, Wraith Lord, and going up against you know the occasional vehicle or something, I have such a hard time with that. And I don't like relying on my Riptide or my Barracuda to fire their ion cannons overloaded to take out vehicles because first of all you have a chance to get hot and then it fails to fire. Second of all, Ballista skill three, Barracuda's a four, but regardless, so you have the, the risk of drifting, and to guarantee that you hit dead on with that strength eight blast template, you have to allocate so many uh, marker lights that it, you know, basically you could have better targets. I mean, do you want to waste your strength eight AP2 blast from the uh, Riptide into a Predator, or do you want to send it into a Terminator squad? You know, what do you want to do? So I feel like the broadside with the Railgun option and the smart missile systems can be somewhat threatening to infantry while still being a high threat to anything less than a 14 armor value vehicle. And I think that that fills a big void in the Tau army right now because the talk online is all about ions, 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 the ion heads and the ion riptides and no one runs the hammerhead with the railgun, no one runs the, no one, well they may run them, they don't talk about it, no one talks about running the railgun on the broadsides, but I think that Having that one option that is good at taking out vehicles, in this case the, the broadside with the railgun, hammerheads, and is good at taking out, or I won't say taking out, but sniping those, you know, armor value two, or armor save two up models. Granted, it's not a blast, but you can still throw the shots in if there aren't vehicles. I think that's good because for the win at all cost player or army, you have, you have that option in there, and I feel like if we only spam strength 7 missile broadsides and whole bunches of strength 8 AB, AP2 ion stuff we're gonna have people are gonna start to find that they will struggle slightly against armor lists if someone is happens to be running them and I just feel like it might be a viable option to consider the railgun on the broadside because it does fulfill a couple of roles so with that being said, I would love to hear back from you guys if you think, you know, you have maybe I overlooked something or you have just any general comments or topics you think you'd like for me to cover or anything. Feel free to comment. I would love to hear from you guys, see what you have to say. And as always, uh, please, if you enjoy this, please like and subscribe and happy wargaming.